He's not the Stig's alpine cousin. He's just the Stig. Apparently he's come all the way across the North Sea in there. Soon we had him out of the hovercraft and into the Ferrari. Five, four point seven, two point three, one, go! So here we go. A genuine 208 mile an hour racehorse on one do or die lap. Did you go into fifth gear? You went into fifth, didn't you? I said, don't go into fifth, it'll just become rear wheel drive and then this will happen. Eventually we had him back on track and look how hard he's having to work. The Ferrari has incredibly complex electronics and that weird four-wheel drive system. But this is not a car in which you can relax. You have to drive it. You have to work. So, four minutes and four seconds. Then it was the turn of the Bentley. Five, four point eight, two point seven, one, go! Continental is so much easier to drive. Partly that's because it had better studded tyres than the Ferrari, but mostly because it's simpler. It has that conventional four-wheel drive system and a normal automatic gearbox, rather than a flappy paddle manual. This is a car in which you can sit back and let the machine do the work. Its V8 will even run on just four cylinders to save fuel, but not here. Not with Stig at the wheel. Look at him. Not doing anything. But will it be faster? Can it be faster? Coming round club now, so we'll know soon enough. You hateful imbecile! Wow! Now that is actually a surprise. The Bentley did it in 3.51, so that's nine... 13 seconds quicker. So when you're dancing on ice in Lapland, the Bentley is the fastest. And I'm glad about that, because of the two, this is my favourite. I like it a lot. However, if I were going on a skiing holiday, I wouldn't use either of these. Because if I wanted a car that would get me to San Moritz and then keep on working when I got there, I'd use what the crew has been using to film me here, a Range Rover. <laughs>